Hi, my name is Phil Firon and this is an introduction to Sketchpath Pro. Now, this tool is primarily an XPath editor. So as I start it up, the first thing that I do is actually choose a folder. Now, I could choose one for my recent input list, but in fact, I'm going to choose a new one and it's going to be this folder here. And I'm going to now just pin it to that so that it's useful for reuse. Now I can uh, select, I see my file list on the left hand side for the files contained within that and that actually includes subfolders and just to show these are the other folders within that. I can control the whether I use subfolders or not from this um, panel here. I can also put in a match pattern so if I'm only interested in XML files let's just do that and that will filter out the other files for that. Okay, let's get rid of the folders panel and go and have a look at our view. Um, now there's one file in particular I'm going to start with which is this file here that I've selected and let's just start typing in an expression. So just start off with a simple expression to show how IntelliSense works with nodes and then we're going to use uh, an axis and another node. Okay, so that shows me all the item elements within my source XML file and I can quickly navigate through them in the results list that was evaluated as I was typing just by clicking down through here. And you'll also see that those items are highlighted in my tree view of that so I can actually click on this here and also you'll see the um, nodes highlighted in the nodes pane here but as I'm at a top level element this is the nodes within that element but just to illustrate if I go and have a look at an attribute it's highlighted the attributes there so as I go through each one right um, let's continue with that expression then let's um, go back and use a predicate so just to show I'm interested only in items that have got a price of a certain value so I say equals here now I get prompted with the available values in my source so I'll, I'll select one from the IntelliSense and carry on um, now what I'm going to do is use a function so if I actually go to functions here um, that can provide prompts for functions as I type I've just locked that in place as well um, so as I type in a function name I'm going to use a concat function so it gives me an explanation here um, because this matches through the IntelliSense and I also get the signature for that function so I need to type in uh, what I'm going to be concatenating so I'll try the author and also let's put in a, a hyphen and let's use another uh, function so let's use a substring just to show how this um, selects the functions that I'm interested in substring uh, language and let's just use a 3 there and now we can unlock that and um, we're actually incomplete there and we can figure that one out quickly because I haven't closed off the concat function yet a oh, quick way of checking that would be for me to double click on that and it shows me um, that that is the the error for that function so substring itself is fine um, but concat wasn't so let's just escape from that close off that function and we're done now just to show that I could go in and edit part of that expression let's put in an additional clause in that predicate so let's say or and let's say publisher publisher 
equals and now I'm going to use a variable that I've saved previously you can see the variables here and in fact as you click on them it, it actually selects them um, if they're nodes so I'm going to use um, the required publisher there as my predicate okay so that completes the expression uh, we looked at debugging quickly but I'll go through in a bit more detail now so you start off debugging by double clicking on the expression so let's start on book list then I can actually click on any part of that expression and that will evaluate the sub expression at that point so here I'm seeing the price or the prices at that part within the expression um, now if I click on item that shows all the items but if I want to include the predicate I just write cursor and that will include the, the predicate and as you can see the number of items has gone down to just the three that I'm interested in likewise for a function you can just select the whole function or you can go within the parts of that function so that's the whole substring function showing me that I'm missing out the first three characters of the language and then that shows the language itself okay let's escape from debug now once you've got an expression that um, let's just evaluate that again just to show that that's the true result now once you've got the true result that you're interested in um, you can then click uh, save and that's going to save now actually what that's done is that saved the expression it as a global because I haven't actually selected a variables group but I'm going to actually select my books group and I'm going to resave that in the books group so and I'm going to delete that because I don't need that um, in fact I can't delete that from here I have to go to globals to delete it so let's go to globals um, right Go back to books, and so this is the expression that I just saved. So let's give it a name now, and let's say it's item description or something. Okay, uh, the, so when you've actually saved a variable, it will give the, the value of the first node in the, in the sequence of results and it will also tell you um, how, how many items in the sequence um, actually the result is a sequence of atomic items so it's not the first node it's the first atomic value that you get listed here um, and the, once I've actually saved that I can now within the context that because I've got books selected I can use that variable within another expression so for example if I wanted to construct a sequence um, like so uh, it's included the variable values within the sequence as you'd expect okay um, now just to talk about variables a bit more um, you can delete variables at any time and they go to the rece recycle bin and you'll see there's the one I deleted there and I can clear the recycle bin at any time so I'll do that just to clear up um, now it's important when you select a group of variables that uh, that actually controls the scope so you only the variables in that group or variables within the special group that is called global are available for evaluation when you're actually typing and they will only show up in IntelliSense. In IntelliSense. Right, that concludes the first part of this demonstration. Thank you for listening.